McCoy. Uh, he was a he was a black gentleman, amen. And uh, he went to he went to I was in high school. He went to college with me. He was a married student at the time, and I was just a young person, single. And he used to go to travel to different churches, and he came to my church in Des Moines, Iowa, South Town Baptist Church. And he had uh, he'd tell jokes and things like that. He said he was a black sheep of family, amen, uh, and things like that. But uh, he he loved to sing, and when he sang, he had some soul to it, amen. amen. And uh, I just want to sing, uh, My God is Real. And the, the neat thing about how God is real is he was real in his life. And then several years ago, God took him from this life. And now he's uh, to, to be absent in the body is to be what? Present, Present with the Lord. Lord. Some of you uh, think in your own mind that God's not real, but he will be real to you eventually. Yes. Amen. Amen. Whether it's in hell or if you get saved. How many are glad they got saved? And they, they're Amen. Not going to hell? Amen. I'm so glad I got saved. But think about it as I, I sing this song, My God is Real. I hope he's real in your life.
correctly. Yeah. A little book there, but it has some powerful things. We're going to look at uh, one of those things, or a few of those things here uh, today. Hopefully it will be a help and encouragement to each of you. By the way, uh, I want to mention this. Uh, uh, my wife, uh, uh, she, uh, she asked me to take her to one of those restaurants where they make the food right in front of you. You know, you've seen some of those places, right? So I took her to a subway, and that's how the fight started. <laughs> so couldn't figure that one out. You know. Can't ever make her happy, amen? Just kidding, of course, but uh, anyways. Hey guys, chapter number one, let's stand and show respect to the reading of God. I'm going to stick with preaching, amen? Eh? That's what I do best. I don't uh, always do best with jokes, but uh, hey guy, uh, with preaching I do well. Hey guy, chapter number one, and uh, we're going to look at uh, beginning verse number seven. We'll read through verse number uh, 14, uh, we're just about the end of the chapter. We'll have a word prayer and then get right into uh, the message here today. Hey guy, chapter number one, beginning verse number seven. It says there, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Excuse me, because of my house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the, the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shealtiel, uh, and Joshua, the son of uh, Jezadok, and the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as uh, the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai, uh, the, the Lord's messenger, in uh, the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, uh, the son of uh, Shealtiel, uh, uh, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of uh, Jozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. I title a message, if you notice there uh, in verse number 14 especially, uh, talks about uh, stirring up the spirit of Zerubbabel and uh, of, uh, of Joshua and of the remnant of the people. And I title a message today, The Stirring of the Pot. The stirring of the pot. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for each and every one that was able to be here today. Lord, I know there's some that um, <coughs> excuse me, weren't able to join us, maybe because of sickness. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd uh, touch their bodies and, and enable them to join us uh, the next time we gather to worship. Lord, uh, maybe there's uh, some that are spiritually sick, Lord, that weren't able to be here. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, just send your Holy Spirit to uh, uh, send conviction, Lord, to, uh, uh, to encourage them to get back into your house. Well, Lord, there are some that are here, Lord, they're uh, uh, maybe uh, not physically uh, sick, but Lord, they are spiritually sick. Lord, there are uh, some that maybe are in need of uh, uh, some stirring spiritually, Lord, they've... Uh, just uh, kind of gotten to the point where they're okay with the status quo. And Lord, I pray that you'd speak to their heart about that need here today. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would have full, uh, free rule and reign in this place. Lord, that you'd uh, fill me up. Lord, help me to be emptied of me. And Lord, that uh, your Holy Spirit would be, uh, it would be obvious that your Holy Spirit is here. Lord, uh, I pray that you'd help each of the listeners, Lord, today. Lord, to allow their hearts to be stirred by your Holy Spirit in such a way, Lord, that we go out of here different than what we came in today. Bless thy word, bless uh, uh, the message, bless your people, and we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for in advance. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, may be seated. Excuse me, the stirring of the pot. You know, a few years ago when uh, we went to a venue, I had some lemonade, or so I thought it was. 
it tasted so watered down it was almost nasty. Well, then I went to get some more later on. Hey, come on, you know, I was thirsty, so I just thought, well, it's at least wet, I'll get a little bit more, and uh, the lemonade was really tart and sour. What had happened was somebody took uh, this lemonade mix, and they put it into the cooler, you know, the, the drink cooler, and all they did was pour it in there and did nothing else. You know, when you have that, you're supposed to stir it up, amen? It's supposed to dissolve, and that's what makes it taste really good. And, and uh, I had gotten some watered-down, nasty-tasting stuff, and then I got some, it almost looked like a sludge. It was actually what it kind of looked like it was coming out, and I was like, I don't know what that is, but... I thought, well, okay, and I mixed it up here, and as I was drinking it, I, the first taste I got of it, I was like, oh, they didn't even mix this thing up. You know, it's the same thing that happens when you're cooking. Uh, when, when you're cooking, it's important to stir the ingredients together every so often. This last week here during Vacation Bible School, I uh, mentioned a few things that I know how to do. And uh, uh, I know how to crochet. And, and some people were like, what? I know how to sew. And why? Because I've learned. My parents, my mom taught me how to do that. And, and uh, cut out patterns and all that. And yes, I know how to cook. Amen? Amen. I can cook. And uh, uh, my, if my wife ever goes away, I can cook. I just take a frozen pizza out of the fridge. Out of the freezer. Amen. Oh, wait, no, that's not cooking. That's... But anyways, in all seriousness, when you're cooking, one of the things that's important is to make sure you're stirring that, those ingredients that you're putting together. If you don't, what ends up happening is something will not taste right. And sometimes it, uh, the Lord has to stir the pot in our life so that we don't lose our savor and also to get us maybe to do something for him. He will stir our pot so that our focus is maybe back upon him rather than ourselves and on our own lives. Here in our text, the Lord had to stir the, stir the pot, so to speak, because his people had forgotten about the house of the Lord. He wanted their focus to be upon him and the task that he had laid before them. My hope and prayer is that by the end of the message, the Lord would have stirred the pot of your heart, and you would leave here challenged and encouraged in the Lord. Got six things, hopefully, to be a help and encouragement to each of you here today. First of all, number one, there's the warning. There's the warning. If you notice in verse number seven, he says there in the latter part of that verse, thus, uh, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your, way, your ways. You know, sometimes God will try to forewarn us as to when he is about to stir the pot. Sometimes he wants us to, you know, get our attention. You ever uh, been driving along and all of a sudden something grabs your attention? And you're like, whoa, what was that? Amen? Uh, just recently here, uh, uh, there was a, uh, an article I saw on the news. And it was about a semi-driver that uh, had crashed in Milwaukee, if I remember correctly. If that's, that, that, that serves me, my memory correctly, or Racine, or somewhere in that neighborhood. And... Uh, uh, the semi-driver had uh, crashed and the course gone over the embankment and the, had caught on fire. And, and I've seen a lot of different things. And, and uh, I've seen accidents. Uh, uh, being that I, I drove a truck for about seven years. And, and I had saw some interesting things while I was out on the road. Uh, I saw a... Uh, uh, I actually saw, I was involved in one of the accidents, we were talking about this recently, when uh, I had a car uh, jump right in front of me, and uh, man, I rear-ended them, and the coolest thing about Jesse, the windows just blew all up. <laughs> I mean, it was, I, was, I was sorry that I hit them, but it was cool that the windows blew up. I mean, just, <laughs> whoa! But I've seen all kinds of different things, Amen. But you know, the problem is, is that sometimes God will try to put some warning signs in front of us. He's trying to get us our, get our attention, trying to say, hey, you need to pay attention. Amen? Sometimes we're, we're kind of bebopping along at 98.6, amen? And we're thinking, hey, life is great. And God is just trying to say, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. Yep. Maybe he's doing that this morning, by the way. Maybe he's trying to uh, get you to pay attention to what he's trying to tell you. 
By the way, he'll use the preaching. He'll use the teaching. He'll re use the reading of his word to, to get us to change our ways. And you and I have to be willing to say, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll listen. You know, it says here in verse number 9, Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of my house that is a waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. You know, the problem with a lot of people is they're going their own way. They're thinking, well, I'm doing fine because nothing bad is happening in my life. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm, excuse me, I'm like Job, you know, uh, uh, just uh, because I'm, I'm righteous, you know. And, and uh, you no, know, sometimes, sometimes God is trying to get our attention. Yes, sometimes we, we may be like Job, but sometimes God is trying to get our attention, trying to say, hey, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong direction. If you don't stop, you're going to run into some danger. Amen? The problem with a lot of Christians, they're not willing to listen. They're not willing to listen to that warning. They're not willing to, to heed that warning. And too often we get into our comfort zone and we don't want to move. Years ago, uh, when I was driving truck, uh, I think I've shared this testimony before. I was driving along in Georgia, up I-75, and uh, it was raining. It was, uh, it was a hard, hard rain. And it got to the point where I could not see to the back of the, the semi. That's how hard it was raining. Mm -hmm. And so what I was doing is, uh, if you've ever done this, uh, you count, uh, you know how, how long it usually takes to pass somebody. And so that's what I was doing. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. In my head, I was like, okay, I've passed this vehicle enough that I can get over to the next lane. Well, uh, I was passing, uh, uh, there was this uh, Jeep that was driving slow in the right lane, so I had gotten in the middle lane uh, in, in Georgia at that time. I don't know if they changed the law now, but in Georgia, you could not get over into the third lane uh, if you were a semi. It would, uh, you'd actually uh, get a fine and a whole bunch of other things. But, uh, so I was in the middle line, lane, and, and uh, I was passing this Jeep up, and, and uh, uh, I was counting one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, and then I, I thought, okay. I've passed this Jeep, and I'm going to get over. And so I put my blinker on, and I, I got over. Well, uh, later that afternoon, because uh, that was sometime early, it was uh, late morning, I'm sorry. It was maybe around 11, uh, uh, 11.30, if I remember, just, just before noon. And I got to my stop. I think it was about 1, 1.30. I got a phone call from my dispatcher. said, uh, Tim, hey, where, where are you at? I said, oh, I'm in Georgia. Uh, and uh, uh, were you on I-75 heading north? I'm like, yeah, yeah, why? And I said, uh, and was there a problem with the load or something? And, well, no, uh, there's a uh, lady that's on the phone. Her dad owns Shaw Carpets. And uh, she said that you just ran her off the road. I was like, what? And uh, then they explained the vehicle. I said, I remember that Jeep. And uh, what had happened was, as I was passing her, the spray was coming up, so she sped up to get ahead of the spray. And I had not known that. I could not see her. I could not see her vehicle. And I was counting, and then I got over, and praise the Lord, there was a, a wide enough area for her vehicle to be able to get off of. Uh, I didn't hit her vehicle, but uh, she felt that I had ran her off the road, and she wrote down the information about the vehicle and, and uh, called uh, my company, and and uh, the company I was driving for, and, and uh, uh, I actually called her, and I apologized. I said, ma'am, I did not see you, and, and I didn't do it maliciously. I didn't run you off the road. I, you know, I said I was counting, and that's when she told me. She said, you know, I did speed up. There was a spray, and, and uh, I'm so sorry about that. And then I sped up, and I said, no, that's okay. I said, I just could not see you. You know, there's sometimes in our life some blind spots. Some areas in our life that we cannot see. And God will sometimes try to get our attention, try to forewarn us and say, hey, you need to wake up to this. Hey, you need to be aware of this area in your life that needs to change. We need to get out of our comfort zone and consider our ways. You know, God, uh, you need to go the way that the Lord would have you to go, by the way. Amen. So we see there, uh, uh, number one, uh, the warning. Consider your ways. Number one, we see the warning. Number two, we see the weather. We see the weather. Once you notice in verse number uh, 10 and 11, 
says, therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, excuse me, and the earth is stayed from her fruit, and I called, excuse me, for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon the men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. You know, God had sent a drought in the land. You know, we've uh, uh, had a lot of extra rain here, amen? Uh, I think they said uh, right now we're about five and a half inches or so uh, um, in the plus of, as far as moisture that we've uh, had so far this year. And I remember, though, if I remember correctly, I want to say it was the uh, year 1988. Uh, am I correct in, in that, the year that we had a drought here? You may I remember that? I think it was around 88, somewhere around in the 80s there. And uh, it, was, it was dry here. Amen? Uh, they wouldn't issue you any, uh, any, uh, uh, any kind of fire burning permit, uh, no, no burning permits at all. Uh, you, there were certain things that you, we couldn't, uh, if I remember right, they canceled the, the fireworks that year. Is that correct? Anybody remember? Anyways, that, that was, uh, I've slept since then. But anyways, uh, they, they canceled the fireworks that year because uh, uh, it was so dry, they were afraid that the cinders, as they're floating down, would uh, spark a flame and, and have a fire somewhere. It was that dry. Could you imagine it said there uh, that he said, Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. There was nothing going on. And, and I called for a drought upon the land, upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labors of the hands. He said, hey, there's a drought that's so, uh, uh, so drastic that hopefully everybody will pay attention. Sometimes God will send a drought in your heart and in your life. He'll allow a spiritual drought to take place in your heart in order that you might get hungry and thirst after Him uh, and once again as you did before. You know, I've seen God use different things. I've seen God use jobs to get people's attention. I've seen God use uh, family to get people's attention. I've, I've seen God use a, a marriage, a, a maybe problems in the, in the marriage or whatever it may be, a, a different circumstances in, in your life. And God wants to use those in order to get you to be stirred up spiritually. Keep your finger there and hang out. We'll come back to it here in just a moment. Notice with me real quick, like in the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter number 85. Psalm chapter number 85. There's a lot of different things that God may use to get our attention, but he wants to do something in our life. Psalm chapter number 85, picking up in verse number 4, I want you to notice what it says there. Turn us, uh, uh, turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw up thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. You know, God sometimes allowed, uh, allows things in our life to get our attention. God allowed some things to happen in the life of the sons of Korah in order that they might have revival in their heart. And sometimes God will do that in your life. He'll allow a spiritual drought to come along so that you'll have spiritual, uh, spiritual revival. Amen? He wants us to be alive. He wants us, he, he doesn't want a bunch of uh, dead Christians. Man alive, there's a lot of people in this world that have dead Christianity. Amen? I, I, I want to know that my God is real. Amen? Like Brother, uh, Brother McCoy saying. I want to know that he is alive, that he's working. That he's just not, uh, you know, somebody up in the big sky and, and uh, you know, that people talk about that we fear. No, I want to know he's real in my life. Amen? Amen? I want you to know that he's real in your life. Sometimes he has to send a spiritual drought to make us more aware and more uh, thirsty after God and, and what he's trying to do in our life. And, and we need to be, to be able to pay attention to that. What we see there is the weather. Number one, we see the warning. Number two, we see the weather. 
Notice back there in our text, number three, we see the willingness. We see the willingness. Notice in verse number 12. It says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Sheltiel, uh, and Joshua, the son of uh, Josedach, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as, their, uh, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. You know, uh, we oftentimes sing a, a song, Obedience. It goes like this. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe, doing exactly what the Lord command, and doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately, and joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. And the problem with a lot of Christians is they don't obey. You know, uh, it's like this: we tell our children, "Hey, go take out the gra- I'll take out the trash." Uh huh. Okay. Go take out the trash. Uh huh. Okay. You know, they can hear all day long, but until they actually do it, amen, they're not obeying. They can know that they need to obey. By the way, children, uh, young people, you ought to know that you ought to obey, amen? Yeah. One of the parents left me a $20 bill up here to say that, amen? <laughs> but in all, in all reality, we need to have a willing heart saying, Lord, I'll, I'll obey. Our hearts uh, will be more inclined to follow instantly what the Lord would have us to do when we learn to obey. You'll learn to fear the Lord when you have an obedient heart, by the way. Boy, when you obey and you say, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a, uh, a fear of my dad, all right? When my dad said, hey, do this, son, all right? It was a reverence, a respect when he said, son, this is what you're going to do. Okay, Dad, go take out the trash. Okay. Why? Because I reverenced him. Was he a perfect dad? No. Did he discipline the always the right way? No. But I reverenced him because he was my authority in my life. And many times God is trying to tell us, hey, this is what I want you to do. We may, always, we, we may not always like what we, we hear from the Lord, but we, we, we ought to get to the point where we say, okay, Lord, I'll obey. I may not always like it, but I'll obey. By the way, it's easy to fall into the temptation of doing your own thing. You know, sometimes we say, well, I already know. Your, your kids never do this. It seems like once in a while my kids say, I'll say, son, this is how you need to do it. Son, daughter, this is how you need to I already know. I know. No, no, I'm trying to explain. No, I already know. Okay, I'll let you do it. You figure it out that you're doing it wrong, and I'll explain it later. Amen? Right? You, oh, my, my kids are the only rotten ones. All right. But anyways, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we do the same thing to the Lord. We hear the Lord saying, hey, this is what you need to do. We say, oh, I know. But, but I'm not like... Brother Jake. Amen. And uh, so I, I can do better, Lord. <laughs> and brother, brother Josiah would agree with me, amen, <laughs> being that they're brothers. He knows. So I know. And sometimes God is just trying to teach us something different. Amen. amen. Trying to teach us his way. Amen. By the way, his way is always best. Mm-hmm. Amen. You'll never go wrong by obeying him and following him. Yeah. The problem with some Christians is they get to the point where they just they say, well, I already know, but I'm just going to do it this way. No, God has a way of doing it. Amen? And you, sometimes you just need to say, okay, Lord, I may not like it, but I'm going to obey you. I'm going to follow you. Oh, learn to obey. Have that willing heart. Number three, we see the willingness. Number one, we see the warning. Number two, we see the weather. Number three, we see the willingness. Number four, we see the word. We see the word. Look back at our text there in verse number 13. 
Then spake Haggai, uh, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. You know, I'm so thankful for God's written word. Amen. We, uh, another song, we sang this last week, uh, and we uh, sing, it, sing it sometimes, I think, in here. Uh, it goes, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Uh, something uh, uh, is what well, divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Amen. I don't remember that one line there, but uh, anyways, it's talking about the promises of God. They're there for you. Amen. You, uh, uh, they're there for you to be a help to you. They're there to to help us and and motivate us. And and uh, I'm thankful for His promises to us. You know, in God's Word, I want you to notice something real quick, like here. I'm just going to show you a couple of these promises. Keep your finger there, and hey, I will come back with you in just a moment. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. And in Hebrews chapter number 13, notice with me real quick, like verse number 5. Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 5. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. Now notice this next phrase. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Wow. What a great promise. Yes. Amen. The problem with some people is that they, they believe it. Well, God just forgot about me. No. If you're going your own way, you know, sometimes you know, God has never left the path that he's on, amen? The problem is that we leave the path that he wants us to be on. And he's still there, waiting with open arms, saying, hey, uh, here's the path right over here. Come back. Amen? But I'm so glad and so thankful for that promise, though. No matter what we do, no matter, the, no matter what choices we make in life, God has promised us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. You ever had a friend uh, uh, leave you? You ever had a close, uh, a close acquaintance or a close friend uh, forsake you? I know I have. Boy, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, the Bible tells us. He, uh, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. What a great promise. By the way, there's another promise. Uh, not only is he there with you, but he's fighting for you. Look in uh, Isaiah chapter number 41. Isaiah chapter number 41. Isaiah chapter number 41. Notice with, with me real quick like verse number 10. Isaiah chapter number 41, uh, verse number 10 says... Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Wow. What a great promise, amen? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, God's fighting for you. I don't know about you, but I, I like when somebody else fights for me, amen? <laughs> uh, now, I, I remember... Uh, Years ago, my my brother and I we, uh, uh, we 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 were best of buds, but we were worst of enemies. Amen. <laughs> and there were times that uh, uh, boy, uh, we would uh, uh, if somebody else you know we we could quarrel much amongst ourselves, but when somebody else started picking on my brother, you better believe I. Hey, wait a second, that's my brother. I I can yell at him and I can fight him, but you can't. Amen. <laughs> Man, the neighbor kids, they come over and they try to pick a fight. Man, no, you, you're picking a fight with me if you're picking a fight with him. Amen? I'm glad that God does that for us. Amen? Hey, that's my child. If you're picking a fight with him, you're picking a fight with me. Amen? Aren't you glad that God is fighting our battles like that? Amen. The problem with us, though, is that we, sometimes we try to fight in vain our own battles. We fight in our own strength. We think, well, if I could just do this, or if I could just fight off this. No, no, no. You can't do it anyways. You're going to need the Lord's help. But I'm glad for the promise that he'll fight for you. I'm glad for another promise. Notice with me in Jeremiah chapter number 1. Jeremiah chapter number 1. 
And in Jeremiah chapter number 1, notice in verse number 19. Notice what it says there. And they shall fight against thee, but uh, they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to, the, to what? Deliver thee. Deliver thee. I'm glad for the promises that he can deliver. Amen? You know, FedEx doesn't have anything on the Lord. Amen? <laughs> UPS can't compare. Amen? <laughs> Why? Because God is able to deliver. You and I need to realize that. Oh, you know, he'll stir the pot in your heart so that you, you are reminded that he's there with you. We forget so easily that the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is not our own. Oh, we need to, uh, to realize the word there. Number one, we see the morning. Number two, the weather. Number, uh, number three, the willingness. Number four, the word. And lastly, number five, the waking. The waking. In Haggai, uh, chapter number one, verse number 14, notice what he says there. I guess I better get to the right chapter. There, there we go. Haggai chapter number 1, verse number 14 says, And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. You know, sometimes the Lord will stir the pot to get us to wake up. Amen? Sometimes, as I said, we're, we're kind of going along in cruise control. And, uh, I remember years ago when, when I drove truck, uh, uh, one thing that they would remind us, uh, uh, my boss, and, and they, they'd send us different things just to remind us, of, uh, and that is uh, make sure you don't uh, get hypnotized uh, by the road. Yes. What they mean by that is that after you're driving down the road, uh, what happens is you've got this constant you know, white line that's going by, you've got a co constant solid white line, uh, on your right, you got a constant yellow white, uh, yellow line uh, on the far left there, and and you can be driving along and not even pay attention to what's going on because you've just kind of been kind of going go in, you're in cruise control and and you're just kind of going through life and and that can happen in life as well. You're not really paying attention to the warning signs. You're not paying attention to what God's trying to do. You're not paying attention to where you're going. Amen. Remember one year, uh, uh, I had this uh, gentleman that uh, uh, my boss, he, he said, Tim, can you train him? And I said, sure. And I trained him, and I, I explained to him. I said, hey, when you got a load that needs to get to a place, make sure you check your uh, you know directions that you're going. And at that time, I didn't have GPS, and... And uh, I used a, uh, used a big Rand McNally uh, trucker's map. And uh, it could tell you the, the uh, highways that truckers could be on. And, and so I'd look at it, okay, I can get here and I can go over here. And, and I'll be over here, all right, by this time I can make my load uh, get there by that time. I had the dispatcher, uh, Kim was her name, uh, Kim Hakes. Uh, she, she called me up one time. She goes, Tim, uh, uh, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. She goes, if you were going to uh, uh, this place, and it was somewhere down, uh, if I remember correctly, it was down either in uh, Georgia or the Panhandle. I couldn't remember which it was, but somewhere in that area, if I remember right. And she goes, which way would you go? I said, oh, I'd, I'd take uh, uh, you know, 94, down to 90, 290, 294. Uh, I'd catch I-65, go over across in uh, Kentucky to I-75, and I'd run 75 all the way down to, uh, I think it was the Panhandle. And uh, I'd get there, uh, you know, it would probably take me a day and a half. She said, uh, would you ever be over, in, and it was way over in, uh, uh, it was way over in Missouri. And uh, she goes, would you ever be over that way? And I said, no. I said, why are you asking? She goes, the guy that you train. I said, wait, wait a second. She goes, no, hear me out for a second. The guy that you train is supposed to be down in the pan panhandle. It was the panhandle, because she even said, he's supposed to be down in the panhandle. He was supposed to have the load there this morning. I said, oh. I said, well, where's he at? And he was over in Missouri somewhere. I said, what in the world? I said, no, I would tell him, hey, go through here, and this is where you go, and, and this is how you get there. And, and she said, yeah, well, he's not following directions. You know, sometimes there are some people like that, some Christians like that, 
that aren't following directions. There are just there there uh, uh, too many Christians aren't challenged by the work uh, uh, you know by by what God's trying to do in their life, and and too many Christians aren't challenged by the work of the Lord either. Too many Christians are, are not involved in doing anything. Uh, you know, there, there's a, a lot of things that are left undone because Christians aren't willing to say, hey, I'm, I'll do it. You know, when we allow God to wake us up, we become aware of what God uh, wants us to do for Him. We be care, be, become aware of others' needs. You know, there's so much work to be done. You know, there is a lost and dying world outside these doors that need the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and I have to be awake to that. Amen? Be aware of that. Be aware that, that there are people that need the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. But then we need to let God stir up the ingredients of our heart so that we'll be a better Christian for, for Him. Is God stirring your heart to, uh, heart's pot today? Has He been able to speak to your heart and change you? Or have you become cold and indifferent to the Lord in this bidding? What will it take to get your heart stirred today? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looked around. I'm going to ask just a couple of quick questions, and we'll have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk to the Lord. Come and do business with Him. If you're here today and say, Pastor Hallett, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home. In this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate the need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Yes, I see that hand as well. Anybody else? The other question is this, then. If you say, Pastor, I know, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. God spoke to my heart today. He's, he's been kind of stirring the, the pot in my heart. He's making me aware of some things in my life that need to be changed, need to be different. Or maybe he's stirring your heart to, to uh, be aware more of the unsaved. Maybe he's stirring your heart to uh, some areas in your life that, that need to be improved, need to, need to be changed. God spoke to your heart about that today. He said, Pastor, would you pray for me? God spoke to my heart. Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are hands all over this auditorium today. Thank you. We slip them down. I see the one back there and this one over here. Anybody else? Pastor, I didn't raise my hand just a moment ago. God spoke in my heart. Would you pray for me? I'm not calling you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I simply want the privilege to pray for you. Pastor, pray for me. God spoke in my heart. Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that one as well. Anybody else? Thank you. We slip them down. Pastor, pray for me. God spoke in my heart. Would you pray for me? In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I'm going to invite you to come and talk with the Lord. Come and do business with Him. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless this invitation time. Lord, I pray that you be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone.